Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute again and I am so sorry, but the election is finally over and I couldn't be happier. So I am back and I'm hoping to be back to my normally scheduled programming. I'm hoping that this is the time that I'm finally able to just kind of get back into the swing of things and post regularly. So yeah, I've been gone for a long time and as you can see, we moved into a new space and everything. Still trying to figure out the lighting situation, so just bear with me while I figure out what works best and what doesn't. But this is what I came up with today. I kind of like it, it's a little different. You can still see my old background in the back here. So any tips and tricks, please let me know. I'm all ears. But yeah, if you are a new person or if you're new here, welcome. We're so excited to have you. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm super excited you're still here. I look forward to uh, bringing more stories your way. Um, so yeah, so if that's something, I, we talk about all things true crime and that kind of thing. And so um, I am thinking about throwing in like a paranormal aspect for a second video a week. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, go ahead and hit the little subscribe button down below and the little bell icon so you can be notified when I upload. I do want to give a quick warning that some of the things that we talk about can be pretty disturbing. So if that's something that your mental health cannot handle, just go ahead and click off this video and I can catch you somewhere else. Uh, but your mental health will always be more important than any YouTube video ever will be. So yeah, if true crime is something that you are not interested in, just go ahead and uh, go find a video that'll be good for your mental health. Also, uh, just a quick reminder that I would appreciate everyone could be really respectful of the people that we talk about in the comments. Um, this one today, um, I've seen a lot of hate on the internet because of it. A lot of the research that I did pointed towards you can make your own opinions, but there is a way to express your opinion while still being respectful. And I know that I, for the most part, do not have a problem with the people in my community being disrespectful. But just a quick reminder that these are real people going through this. These are real people that have been hurt by whatever has happened here. And so there is a way to have a discussion about these things without being disrespectful. So please just keep the family in your thoughts while we're going through this. That way you can understand that these are real human beings behind the scenes. I know a lot of times I think we've all become so desensitized to these types of topics that it can be easy to forget that these are real people behind these stories, but they are and they have feelings and they, you know, I think when reading these comments, they would like them to remain respectful. So just a quick reminder to do that. But other than that, I think we can just go ahead and hop right into today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Chance Engelbert. Chance was born on December 2nd of 1993. He was the oldest of three and he also he has two younger brothers. He was born to Don and Everett Engelbert. All three of the boys were raised on a ranch in South Dakota and Chance was a cowboy at heart. He loved everything that had to do with uh, rodeo and just country life in general. He loved to fish, he loved to hunt, he was a very avid outdoorsman, and he just loved spending time with his family on their family-owned ranch. He was very close to his family. He loved his two younger brothers. They did a lot of things together. He just had this zest for life. He just loved life. Uh, Chance wanted to be a bareback uh, bronc rider growing up, but he was not old enough when he started getting into the rodeo and that kind of thing. So he actually started off riding bulls. And then when he was old enough to be able to ride broncs, that's when he got into that. And he just seemed to adapt to rodeo life pretty quickly. He enjoyed the rodeo life and he was pretty successful at it. He was very talented in what he did and so talented even that when he uh, was looking towards getting, well, when he was getting ready for college, he was given a full ride scholarship. If I understood that right, he was given a full ride scholarship to Laramie County Community College. It was there that he decided to study uh, diesel mechanics and also welding. This was kind of the same thing that his dad had done his whole life, and so he was just following his father's footsteps. But while he was attending college, he also got into derby cars. And he started working on these cars and um, started working on these vehicles and those kinds of things, and he seemed to really enjoy it, and he started making a lot of friends doing this. He also got a job working in a mine, and that's where he met his best friend, Matt Miller. 
him and Matt became pretty quick friends and they pretty much did everything together. They worked on the cars together. They just hung out. They just became really good friends and spent a lot of time together. They really seemed to enjoy each other's company. Chance was a very hard worker. He didn't like to miss work. He liked to go out and earn his paycheck with what seemed like manual, like phys physical labor. He really enjoyed working like that. And Matt was the same. They worked together um, in the mines. Uh, from what I understand, I think they worked in the mines together and they just really enjoyed it. They enjoyed, you know, going out and working hard. They also worked on the derby cars kind of as their little side gig. That's what they were doing together. And it was in October of 2017 that Matt and Chance decided to drive down to Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. Now this was kind of, uh, there were two reasons to go down to Scott's Bluff. They wanted to buy two derby cars that they could work on, but there was also a girl that Chance was talking to that came from this area. Her name was Bailey. Um, him and Bailey kind of knew each other through the rodeo scene, uh, I think just kind of in passing. And when they started talking, it didn't take them long to meet up in person. And as soon as they met, they basically started dating right away. They just hit it off and they started dating and everything seemed to be going really, really well for Chance. He really loved Bailey and he wanted to spend time with her and it didn't take long for Bailey to meet Chance's family and come up to the family ranch and meet the rest of his family who he was very close to. And within a year, um, they decided to get married. In fact, they got married on their their dating anniversary. So in October of 2017, Bailey and Chance got married. It was a very small wedding, nothing fancy, nothing, you know, crazy, but there did seem to be some tension at the wedding. It seemed like Bailey wasn't exactly happy about some of Chance's family coming to the wedding, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me considering that uh, really they had gotten along. Bailey had gotten along with Chance's family just fine while they were dating and so it seems kind of strange that just out of the blue Bailey didn't seem to want to have anything do with, to do with Chance's family and it was during the reception that uh, some sort of argument started because of Chance's family being there. This was kind of confusing to Chance's family as well. They didn't quite understand what was going on because they had a pretty good relationship before this wedding so it was pretty strange that Bailey didn't want his family there but either way they got married and uh, started their married life but soon after the wedding Bailey and Chance announced that they were pregnant they were uh, getting ready to have their first baby and this was a very exciting time for Chance he had always wanted to be a father so he was extremely excited about this he was also a very hands-on father he went to all the doctor's appointments he was you know, trying to be there in every way for Bailey. And even after their baby was born, they named him Banks. He was a little boy. Even after he was born, uh, Chance was very hands-on. He spent a lot of time with his new baby and he just seemed to be over the moon excited to be a dad. And during this time, Chance's family also thought that things were going to get better, that uh, they were might be able to mend the relationship with Bailey since there was a new baby and they just wanted to be involved and be a part of Banks' life as well. But it didn't seem to work. The relationship just didn't seem to get any better. A chance went to work to provide for his new family. He was working full-time as a minor and uh, Bailey was in full-time nursing school during their first couple of years of marriage. So things seemed to be going well. Um, there's some mixed reports. It seems like uh, while, while Bailey says in interviews that they rarely fought and that even if they did fight, they were able to kind of mend things pretty quickly. The rest of the family and a lot of friends seem to disagree on this. During the beginning of their marriage, Bailey and Chance were living with a friend of theirs and this friend says that they would get into fights a lot and Bailey would often accuse Chance of doing things that hadn't happened. She would also, um, she seemed to blow things way out of proportion too. There was a lot of times that she would uh, make a big deal of things that probably didn't need to be made a big deal or something along those lines. So really, um, I don't know if their relationship was good or not, but it did seem like there was a lot of strain in the relationship. But Chance did work hard, as I said multiple times now, and he was soon able to, well, both he and Bailey were able to save up and buy a house for themselves in Wyoming. 
Chance seemed to be super excited about building this future for him and Bailey and Banks. And he was, uh, he just seemed to be over the moon, just really happy that things were kind of going his way, that he was able to, you know, make a better life for his family. And he was just really excited about this. But like I said, their relationship was full of highs and lows, and the lows were pretty low, it seemed like. And um, friends and family would eventually uh, encourage the couple to go to couples therapy, but it didn't seem like that would ever happen. Unfortunately, during the summer of 2019, Chance, along with 600 of the other workers, were laid off from their job. This included uh, Chance's best friend, Matt. They were all laid off and left without a job. So they started looking for something new. They wanted... Um, it, Chance and Matt were able to find something together and they were able to start a new career in propane. This job was set to start on Monday, July 8th of 2019. So both Chance and Matt had the 4th of July week off, essentially. They were able to just kind of enjoy themselves before starting their new job. And so they made plans to go to Chance's family's ranch and hunt and fish for the week and just have a good time. But during this time, Chance and his mother seemed to get into an argument. And um, I'm not sure what the argument was about, but it seems like any argument, because Chance was so close with his family, it seemed like the argument started after Bailey kind of entered their lives. And from what I can understand that this argument was um, directed towards Matt's, or uh, was directed towards Chance's mom, um, not, I don't want to say meddling, but being concerned about Chance in the relationship. And uh, during this argument, Chance said that he wanted to take a week break from talking to his mother. He didn't want to talk to her for a week. And she respected that. And she said, yeah, I'll give you a week. Um, it seems like it really broke her heart because she was really close to her children. And she just wanted to, uh, she usually did speak to them every day, but she decided to respect Chance's boundary with that and give him the week to kind of cool off so they could, you know, come to a mutual understanding. So since this argument happened, Chance decided that he didn't want to go to his parents' house for the week and, you know, do hunting and fishing. So he talked to Matt and they both made other plans. Uh, Matt decided to do his own thing while Chance and Bailey decided to go to Gearing, Nebraska to be with Bailey's family. So Chance and Bailey made it their way down to Nebraska and they were spending time with her family. And on July 6th, they had a full day planned. Chance was going to go with Bailey's father and her brother to the golf course. They were going to go golfing for the day. And then later on in that evening, they had plans to go spend time with some of Bailey's, Bailey's friends, go have dinner with them and you know, spend some time with them. But the day was beautiful. It was a beautiful July day. And so Bailey decided to go out to the golf course, uh, take Banks out to the golf course and see what was going on with uh, Chance, her dad and her brother. When she got there, Chance's mood had completely changed. She had spoken to him throughout the day and everything seemed fine. But when she got to the golf course, his mood had just changed drastically. He was angry and he told her to get back in the car because they were leaving. Bailey says that she was driving um, because Chance had had a couple of drinks at the uh, golf course. She said that he was pretty drunk. And so she was driving and Chance said he wanted to go home. So Bailey went back to her grandparents' house where they were staying and he said, no, I want to go home home, not here. So they pulled up to the house around 7.30 that evening well, 7.15ish to 7.20ish that evening. And Chance, Bailey says that Chance got out of the car and started walking away. I forgot to tell you this. According to Bailey, the reason Chance was so upset was because either her father or her brother had said something about him not making as much money in his new job. And this had upset him pretty bad. Um, that's what the argument had been over and that's why Chance was so upset. But either way, they get back to Bailey's grandparents' house and Chance gets out of the car and starts walking away. Bailey takes Banks out of the vehicle, takes him inside to her grandmother and then runs outside and tries to find Chance, but he's gone already. And I just find that peculiar. Like he must have been running away if he was gone that fast, but that's what Bailey said, that he was gone already. Bailey also says that this was pretty typical behavior for Chance. Like if they got into an argument, he would just walk away from the situation. So she wasn't too concerned about it. She wasn't too worried about him uh, walking off. She figured he would come back. But when he didn't, 
Bailey says that she starts driving around looking for him. So somewhere between 7.30 and 7.45, Chance calls his friend Matt, and he says that he needs a ride back to Wyoming, he needs a ride back now, and he asks and he asks Matt to come pick him up. Now, Matt was at home with a couple of friends. They had been drinking, so he wasn't able to pick him up, but Chance says that he is going to walk north towards Torrington, which is about 30 minutes away from Gearing, from what I understand. So Matt tells Chance like, hey, I can't pick you up, but let me make some calls and see if I can find somebody to come pick you up. We'll get you out of there. Uh, Chance deliberately told Matt that he was walking north. During this time, Bailey is driving around Gearing looking for Chance. She says she can't find him anywhere. She says she's also trying to call him during this time, but he won't pick up. It was then that Bailey finally got a hold of Chance and he told her that he was walking south. So these are two very conflicting statements. Uh, he tells his best friend that he's walking north, which would be the direction of his home. And then south would be the completely opposite direction. And um, But many eyewitness statements and also surveillance footage does point towards Chance walking north towards his home. Bailey says that during the phone conversation where Matt said that, or where Chance said that he was dry, or walking south, he hangs up on her and that was the last time that she heard from him. It was around 7.49 that evening that an eyewitness saw Chance walking north, just like Matt had said, at a Domino's in Gearing. So a couple of minutes after he left the uh, car and started walking, he was seen walking north towards like the Wyoming, South Dakota direction. So let's go back to Matt for a second. Matt calls Chance's family and tells them what's going on and says that Chance really needing a ride. Uh, Chance's mother, Dawn, was kind of hesitant to reach out because uh, they knew that Chance was having a fight with Bailey and the fight between Dawn and Dawn being uh, Chance's mother, the fight between Dawn and Chance had been about Bailey. So it seemed like Dawn was kind of hesitant to reach out. She didn't want to, um, you know, break that boundary that Chance had set for her. And so they started calling other relatives, seeing if they could try to get a hold of Chance, seeing if, you know, they could get him the help, get him picked up. But Chance was not picking up the phone for anyone. He wasn't answering anybody's phone calls. He wasn't, there was, nobody could get a hold of him at all. Eventually, Dawn reached out to Bailey and talked to her. Now, Bailey told her that, you know, everything was under control. They were all out looking for Chance. And it was getting closer to nine o'clock. Nine o'clock was when a storm was supposed to hit. And this was a pretty big storm. Uh, there was pretty high winds. There was also an inch of rain, thunder and lightning, all that thing, all that. And the rivers in the surrounding areas where Ch Chance went missing, all of those rivers raised eight inches, which is a pretty, you know, big amount. But Bailey told Dawn that everything was under control. They were out looking for him and they were going to take a break during the storm. But as soon as the storm was gone, they would go out and look for Chance some more. So still no one is able to get a hold of Chance. No one has seen Chance anywhere. And uh, things are starting to get really scary. People are, you know, like especially Chance's mom, she's getting really worried. Like, where is he? what is going on. Chance isn't texting anyone back. He isn't calling anyone. So his aunt Katie decides to reach out to him saying, hey, you know, I, I think she said I have a question or something like that. Can you call me? Uh, she wasn't trying to like alarm him that people were really worried, but she was just trying to get him to call somebody. And she sent that text message. He didn't respond. And then at 9.08, he responds. And these text messages are pretty strange. He says, I'll put it up here. He says, I'm with the straight faced emoji. And then his second set text says, I B D E S E R E A L L Y G. She responded with, You're what? Are you okay? And it's nothing. She gets nothing in return from chance. So, this night comes and goes and Bailey's family is out looking for Chance. They can't find him anywhere. And so the next morning, panic sets in. Chance's family is panicked. Um, you know, it just seems like everyone's really panicked. Like, where did Chance go? This wasn't like him to just disappear into thin air. So by 11 a.m., Bailey and her family decide to go to the police department to file a missing persons report. 
Bailey's family said that it took the police a while to take this seriously, like they didn't really take this seriously at first. And uh, they had to make several calls in order for the police department act to actually take a look into this. When Bailey goes to the police department, she said that she had already been in contact with Verizon to see if they could get his last known location from the last call he made, but that is personal information, so Verizon couldn't just let that out. But once police do tar start taking this seriously, they get together a pretty extensive search party. They are looking on horseback, ATV, with drones, with cadaver dogs, like they're looking everywhere in the areas that Chance might have gone, and they do have a couple of leads on where he had gone. Chance's family was involved in the church uh, in the search. Matt came down and helped with the search. Chance's friends were involved in the search and everyone was just worried and looking for him everywhere, but there was absolutely no sign of Chance. He just kind of vanished. Matt also knew that there was no way that Chance would just miss his first day of work unless something was seriously wrong. Like this wasn't in Chance's demeanor. He wouldn't just disappear and not tell anyone where he was. He wouldn't miss work. He wanted to provide for his family. This was just not like him. And at this point, several days have gone by and police were able to track his last known location with his cell phone pings. This is the areas that people were searching. There was some, there was also some surveillance footage that had been discovered that showed Chance walking north at about 7.51 on July 6th, the night he went missing. It was in a small town named Terrytown, um, he was walking north down the street when the surveillance footage caught him. And then on the surveillance footage, you can see him look down at his phone and then make a sharp left turn to walk down another street. And this would be in the direction of walking towards Torrington, where he had told Matt that he was going to go. So many people think that it looks like he's following directions on his phone. But I was listening to his mother speak, um, and she said that Chance would know exactly where to go. He wouldn't need a GPS to tell him where to go. Like, he would know how to get to Torrington. So she thinks that he was texting somebody on his phone. And this was right around the time when everyone was trying to call him and text him. Police were also able to get a location from Chance's phone that pinged around 10 p.m. on July 6th. Uh, it pinged close to a truck stop that was only about three miles away from Bailey's grandparents' home. So <sighs> surveillance footage shows, you know, that he's walking on, uh, you know, away from Bailey's parents' house in a town The Terryton was only two miles or three miles away from Gearing, which was... Okay, this is getting confusing, but... He is seen on surveillance, surveillance footage about three miles away from, in a town about two miles away from Gearing. That's where he is seen on surveillance footage, on the surveillance camera. But then on the, at 10 p.m., his phone pinged about three miles away from Bailey's grandparents' home. And so this is kind of weird. Like, how did he only walk three miles in three hours? So... This was at 10 o'clock. He left around 7.30, so two and a half hours. He would have, you know, gone much further. He was a very athletic person. He was very in shape. He could have gone a lot farther in two and a half hours. So I'm going to add another story here that's not exactly verified, but it's more so hearsay, but I do think it's important. Uh, people were, you know, going to the places that they thought Chance might go to, hoping that that's where he had gone. And one of Chance's other friends had decided to go to his house to see if maybe he had made it there. So once this friend gets to Chance's house, he goes up the porch and goes to knock on the door. This friend says that he sees a random phone on Chance's porch. So this friend calls Matt and says, hey, I'm at Chance's house and there's this phone. He describes it to him and Matt doesn't know if it's Chance's phone or not. So Matt says, just leave it there. I'll come by and check it out here in just a little bit. He then calls Bailey and asks her about it. And Bailey has no idea whose phone this is either. So Matt hangs up with Bailey and decides to go past Chance's house to see if that's where the phone is at or whose phone it is. But by the time he gets there, the phone is gone. So he calls Bailey and she says, oh, I called a neighbor to have him come pick up the phone. This phone was never looked at by police officers. It was never logged into evidence anywhere. And the phone just kind of disappeared. So there's nothing to do with that. But it is kind of strange. 
So investigators start looking into the storm being the biggest factor into Chance's disappearance. They think that the storm led to maybe his death, like maybe he got swept up into the river and he passed away due to natural, you know, um, the elements and stuff like that. But Chance's friends and family have a really hard time with this explanation because Chance was such such an outdoorsman. He spent so much time outdoors hunting, fishing, you know, doing all things outdoors. He would have known how to protect himself from the elements. They don't think that a storm, while it was a bad storm, they don't think that this could have killed him. So they don't believe this angle. They don't think that... Um, chance would have been you know taken by the elements they also believe that if that were the case that his body would have been found by now which i kind of agree with but either way police decided to drain uh, a canal to look for chance in the area that he went missing and they found nothing um you know to this day they still haven't found chance's body no one knows where he went there is another theory that maybe chance was a victim of a robbery gone wrong um, you know, he was walking by himself and it was getting later as, you know, it eventually got dark. So maybe he was the victim of a robbery gone wrong. That is another possibility that many people like to look at, but there would be some kind of evidence leaving, you know, leading to that too. So I find that one pretty difficult to believe. There have been a couple of sightings of Chance on July 11th around Casper, Wyoming. There were several people who called into the police and said that they saw someone that resembled Chance hitchhiking on I-25. Now, an officer was dispatched to the area, and not only did they not find Chance, they didn't find a hitchhiker of any kind. But from what I understand, several people called to make this report saying that there was somebody that resembled Chance that was walking in the area, but nothing was ever found as far as that. Then the next day on July 12th, there was another report that came in that somebody said they saw Chance at a Walmart on the east side of Casper, Wyoming. Again, another officer was dispatched to this area and he went through six hours of surveillance footage and never found chance. So both of these sightings seem, they were never able to confirm either of these sightings. Now, I do want to mention a couple of other strange things that happened, but I also want you to remember that um, we are not here to, we are not judge and jury. We don't get to decide who did what. These are just the things that happened, and I'm just presenting that information to you. But a few days after Chance went missing, Bailey actually went to investigators and asked for a death certificate. This raised a lot of red, red flags for people. It did me too. I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. But the way Bailey described it, she said, I am, you know, a young mother, I have a young son, and I'm needing to provide for him, and that death certificate will help me claim the life insurance on Chance. Think of that what you will, just remember we are not here, we are not judge and jury. Also, Chance missed his first day of work, um, and Matt did go in, he couldn't miss his first day of work, so he went in, and the first week that he was there, According to Matt, someone from HR came in and told him that Bailey had called and wondered about cashing one of Chance's checks and was also asking about his 401k. According to Matt, the HR had told him that she was also telling them to just go ahead and fill his spot. But Chance's family had called when he went missing and talked to his new employer and they said, don't worry about it. He has a job here when he comes back. So the fact that Bailey would call and just tell them to fill Chance's job is a little strange to me as well. But that is according to that, according to Matt and Matt didn't seem like a liar to me. He seemed very sincere, like he really cared about, about Chance. But Matt was confused why Bailey would call and tell them to fill Chance's spot. Like, wouldn't you be holding out hope, trying to, um, you know, have hope that your husband would come back? But I will say that the, that Bailey's family has been extremely cooperative with police. They have talked to them whenever they've um, been asked to talk to them. They have spent countless hours in interviews with them. Bailey has been available for phone calls from investigators. She has never once denied them access to her or to their life. Uh, Bailey's, Bailey and her family have decided to stop talking publicly about this case. And I can understand why. 
with a case like this, especially with things looking so strange as they do, uh, the internet is extremely hateful. <laughs> Just so, so hateful for the most part. And sometimes it's really hard, especially in situations like this. I mean, I'm very blessed to have never gone through it, but in situations like this, it's very difficult to, you know, read some of the comments on the internet. And that's why I ask you guys to be polite in the comments. There's a way to discuss things without being hateful. But Bailey's family has decided to stop talking about this publicly, but the investigators in the case have came, came out and said that they have been nothing but cooperative. But these are just the facts of the case, and um, I just ask that you not give any backlash to anyone involved in this case. It is a strange case, and Chance deserves to come home. Chance was so excited to be a father, and he wanted to spend, you know, he wanted to watch his son grow up, and it's just so tragic that he has not been able to do that. So what are your thoughts on this case? I don't know what to think. I think it's very strange and very sad. And I wish that, you know, Chance could come home. Um, you know, as time goes on, I think people start losing hope. And maybe he is still out there somewhere. These sightings, I do find it strange that there were two sightings, one right after another, in the same area. It kind of makes me think that Maybe something happened to him. Maybe he got hurt and, you know, forgot who he was or amnesia or something like that. Maybe there is something more nefarious going on. I would love to know your thoughts about this down in the comments. We can have a discussion about it down below. But yeah, other than that, uh, that's pretty much all I have for you today. If you are interested, again, in listening to more stories like this, just go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Like, comment, and share if you feel led to do so. But yeah, let me know your, th your thoughts down in the comments. And other than that, that's all I have. But I hope this finds you well and I'm sending you so, so much love. Thank you.